other thing that has been a lot in the news is obviously the other side of this, which is unemployment numbers. And there's been a lot of more recent sort of writing about the fact that these unemployment numbers may be flawed in different ways. You've always talked about unemployment numbers not being really helpful, but specifically because, again, of the scale of unemployment, the scale of the benefits given, and using those numbers as a reflection of what's going on. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, one standard view in the markets is that when the top up $300 sort of a week, I think, mm -hmm. um, uh, from the federal government uh, goes away, the COVID sort of extra, um, then workers who currently are not going back to work um, will go back to work. And that it's simply a matter of pay incentives. Uh, and under that scenario, the price pressure that we're seeing now, obviously, more people go back to work, supply increases, and then price pressure should, should level off. I think there is an interesting hypothetical. Um, often the interesting things in these debates come down to stuff that you can't see in the data, um, and you have to make an educated guess about. And in this case, I think the, the interesting question is, imagine um, a, a married couple in Chicago, and um, during lockdown, um, they have switched to remote working over Zoom. We were talking about our affection for Zoom yes. before we started recording. Um, and um, so they, they work over Zoom, and they discovered that they could move to the Lake Michigan shore uh, a few hours' drive north. It would be extremely pretty, very nice for kayaking, and the cost of their housing, their rent, uh, will go down by 50%. So now all of a sudden they've saved a lot of money and the end of lockdown comes and they're asked to go back to work in person perhaps and they say, you know what, we like it with our kayaks and um, one of us is going to stop working because really you know, there are other things to do in life. We want to look after our kids, we want to look after our aged parent, we want to become a part-time yoga teacher, you know, whatever it is. And the other one carries on working remotely because she or he is allowed to. And in that environment, you have a permanent adjustment in the labor supply. The labor force participation, because of this lifestyle choice, triggered by COVID, um, will not go back to where it was. And then you have a permanent labor shock, not a temporary one. Is that uh, well, what you Well, I see? think what's happened is people were forced to adjust to a structure not of the desire or making and it was been, it's been, to date, a very easy adjustment. And uh, it's hard to envisage something f fundamentally different from where we are now. And I think we just have to adjust our analytical vision, so to speak. Because people have changed. They, they, the, the, response, the issue of the extraordinary over the extraordinary imbalance that has been created by the virus uh, is very hard to realize its to dimension until you see the data and the question basically is uh, that has been the major factor in engendering how the system works who decides to move and not move and the uh, effect of that is arithmetically is uh, unquestioned. The only thing is there are people who have that choice. There are others who do not have the choice, whose jobs do not lend to you know, doing it remote. Um, and then there is a lot of the data we're looking at in, uh, at Rock Creek is showing that uh, there is undue pressure on certain populations. There is a racial gap in terms of the way um, these num you know, what we're talking about is impacting different populations and also women, where labor participation has gone down by a lot. Mm -hmm. So these adjustments could have major social and long-term economic impacts that go beyond what the models are showing us. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, but they, we've seen those types of adjustments previously, and the system not only recovered, but prospered. And I think the word prosper is important because that's what we 
as Americans ultimately endeavor to do. And over the generations it's worked. But the generations have changed and people have changed. But much of the same American attitude towards activity and wealth and the like, uh, it's really fundamentally what came out of our past. I think that's a pretty powerful point. So that's, you know, you're on the side of the economy thriving based on where we're going. On your point about um, you know, the disparate impact um, of Sunny, I'd be curious to see what you think about this, because I know you think about, a lot about these issues. I saw a chart indicating that the reservation wage for men is uh, something like um, twen twen no, 33% higher um, than for women. Mm -hmm. So, you know, first question is, why is that? Why do men believe they are worth so much more that it's beneath their digni dignity to take a job unless it's paid up here, whereas a woman would take it here? And what does it mean for relative unemployment rates? I mean, will employers respond by hiring women and just letting the arrogant men stay on the side? Or not so arrogant, <laughs> but I think, I mean, seriously, I really find the whole debate about uh, unconscious bias to be really powerful. Mm. And some of it is conscious, mm. but a lot of it truly is unconscious. And even in uh, workplaces where people do believe in equality of wages, that force continues. Mm. It almost needs generational change mm. for people like, you know, your kids and our kids to sort of think differently about these things. But, um, but there's no question that that kind of bias is out there and mm -hmm. on, on the part of women as well, you know, right. looking at, at other women. Mm -hmm. So it's not just, you know, one gender looking at the other as uh, uh, in a certain way. So, uh, and so we're seeing that all the time. At the same time, I think um, the impact in, you know, two areas where we're seeing higher for women. One particularly, one is in the US, two is in lower income fragile states. Those are the two 